In this video, we're going to be simplifying more rational expressions. So with a lot of these guys, it all comes down to being able to factor everything completely. All right, starting with this, we just have a fraction and we want to see how we can reduce this, but we need to factor everything completely. Uh, so just do this one piece at a time. Starting in this numerator, we can identify there's a common factor here. Now we had some issues earlier, so I've kind of already done part of this for you. Uh, here we have 12 as the common factor for the numerator. So we factor out the 12, and then we're going to be left with x squared. 12 goes into 72 six times, so minus 6x, and 12 goes into 84 seven times, so we have minus 7. In the denominator, there's a common factor that goes into all three of these, and the common factor just happens to be 8. All right, so factor out the 8, and we have x squared, 8 goes into 72 9 times, and then 8 goes into 112 14 times. Now, if you weren't sure about how do we get there, you can always take these numbers, the 8, the 72, and the 112, and you can just kind of break this down one piece at a time until you get to the common factor of 8. So we can look at these and see that these guys are all even, so you can factor a 2 out of these. That will leave us with 4, half of 72 is 36, half of 112 is 56. You see that 2 is still a factor that's common here. So you can divide or factor out another factor of 2. We've got 2, we have 18, and then we would have 28. And again, these guys all have a common factor of 2. So I'm going to factor that out, leaving us with 1. 9, and 14. That's the same 1, 9, and 14 that I have right here. And whenever you put all of these guys together, it's going to be through multiplication. So that tells you that your GCF is going to be 8. Greatest common factor is 8. All right? And now it's a matter of factoring these trinomials that are left over. So I still have the 12. And now I'm trying to find factors of 7 that subtract to 6. That's not too bad. That's going to give us x minus 7 and then x plus 1. In the denominator, x squared minus 9x plus 14. Trying to find factors of 14 that add to 9. That would be 7 and 2. So there's 7 and 2. Both of these guys need to be negative in order to get the positive 14. And so these guys can add to give you the negative 9 in the middle. And now we can see that we have common factors that can reduce. So we can reduce away the x minus 7s. And then you've got 12 over 8. So you can reduce these guys by the common factor of 4. 4 goes into 12 three times. 4 goes into 8 twice. So we're left with 3 times x plus 1 in the numerator over 2 times x minus 2 in the denominator. And there we go. All right. Now let's look at the next problem. So this next one is a division problem. And so what we typically try to do here is we, got, we have to factor everything. Uh, but we do also want to make sure we understand that this division becomes multiplication and we multiply times the reciprocal. So it's just a matter at first of just rewriting the problem. So 2x squared minus 9x minus 5 over x squared minus 9x plus 20. And then we're going to change this division into multiplication. But when I change that, you then have to do the reciprocal here, which means the numerator is now x squared minus 7x minus 30. And you have 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 in the denominator. And now it's just a matter of factoring everything. Some of the stuff may take a little bit of time to do, so um, I'm just kind of scratch this out here off to the side. 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. If you do the AC method, 2 times 5 is 10. And factors of 10 that can subtract to 9 would be 10 and 1. 
So you split this up. So that's going to be minus 10x plus 1x minus 5. I know it's kind of sloppy, but it's just my scratch work here, right? In this first group, the common factor here is 2x, and we're left with x minus 5. In the second group, there's nothing really that these guys have in common, so it's just going to be a 1 that we can factor out. And now we can finish the factoring by grouping with the x minus 5 going in front times 2x plus 1. All right. Again, this is just me kind of doing scratch work here off to the side. It doesn't necessarily have to be neat because it's not part of the big problem over here. This denominator has a lead coefficient of 1, so it's a nice guy. Factors of 20 that add to 9 would be 4 and 5. So with the correct signs, that's minus 4 and x minus 5 times. Over here, this is another nice polynomial that has a lead coefficient of 1. So factors of 30 that subtract to 7 would be 10 and 3. So we would have x minus 10 times x plus 3. In the denominator, this is another one of those go up to the side and kind of scratch it out kind of problems. So 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Doing the AC method, 2 times 3 is 6, and factors of 6 that can add to 7 are 1 and 6. So we use those numbers to split up that middle term to say x plus 6x. Here the common factor is x, and we're left with 2x plus 1. And here the common factor is 3, and again you would have 2x plus 1 left over. So the factorization becomes 2x plus 1 times x plus 3. Alright, so let's put that down here. So 2x plus 1 times x plus 3. And now we look for those common factors that can reduce. So we see that we have x plus 3 here and here. Uh, we've got 2x plus 1 in the numerator and 2x plus 1 in the denominator there. And then x minus 5 in both the numerator and denominator. So almost everything reduces except for x minus 10 in the numerator and x minus 4 in the denominator. Now I know you may be thinking that, oh, we can cross off these x's or reduce the 10 and the 4, but we cannot. Those guys don't have common factors. So we just kind of have to stop right there. All right. Let's see. We've got one more problem here. And this is an addition problem. Now, when it comes to adding and subtracting with fractions, as it has always been the case, you have to have common denominators. So to get common denominators, we've got to start by factoring everything. So this denominator here factors as x plus 6 times x minus 6. And over here, the other denominator factors as x plus 3 times x plus 6. The trick here in these problems is to make sure that everybody has the same set of factors in the denominator. So we put in the missing factor here, and the missing factor is going to be x plus 3. That's what the other guy has that he does not have. So put that in the numerator, because you've got to make sure that both the top and the bottom have the exact same adjustment being made to them. Over here, we are missing the factor of x minus 6. We put that in both the numerator and denominator. And so now when you compare these, they both have the factor x plus 3, x plus 6, and x minus 6. Now what I like to do is I like to take the numerators and kind of work them by themselves off to the side. That way I'm not having to write those denominators over and over again. So I need to figure out what happens with 2x times x plus 3 plus 3 times x minus 6. Okay, So we don't even need to worry about this as being in a fraction. Uh, we just take these and start working them out. just want to know what happens in my numerator. So 2x squared plus 6x. Distribute the 3, so that's plus 3x minus 18. Combining like terms, we have 2x squared plus 9x minus 18. And we want to see if this guy is going to factor. 
So a quick little test over here to the side with the AC method. 2 times 18 is 36. And I want to know, are there factors of 36 that can subtract to 9? And when you go through those factor pairs, you find that 3 and 12 is the combination that you're looking for. So we're not done with this problem yet. We're going to take the plus 9x and rewrite that using the 3 and the 12. So with your right signs, that's going to be minus 3x plus 12x. And then we can factor by grouping. Okay. All right, so in this first group, that common factor is x, and I'm left with 2x minus 3. In the second group, the common factor is plus 6, and again, I'm left with 2x minus 3. So when we put it all together, you've got 2x minus 3 times x plus 6, and that's what all of the stuff in your numerator becomes. All right, so now let's put it all together in our problem. So we've got one big fraction. In the numerator, you have this factorization of 2x minus 3 times x plus 6. And that's over the common denominator that we found above that included the factors x plus 6 times x minus 6 times x plus 3. And wouldn't you know it, you have a common factor of x plus 6 that gets to reduce. So even though we combined these two fractions, we added them, we got the common denominator and all that stuff, we still had more work to do because we had more simplifying. And so this now is our final answer. 2x minus 3 over the product x minus 6 times x plus 3.